It has been several years since I was able to tell you this. All this time I've been trying to forget those events. They haunt me every night. In the dark. Alone. You know, betrayal is not just an action. It's the moment when the world breaks under your feet. When someone you trusted turns out to be not who you pretended to be. My story is not about mysticism, not about the supernatural. It's about people. About what they are capable of when you are no longer needed. It was autumn. I had just moved to a small town on the outskirts of Colorado. The town was small, cozy, and, most importantly, it was quiet. After the noise of the megalopolis, I was looking for peace, and this town seemed ideal for starting from scratch. I quickly became friends with the locals. The people there were simple, friendly, especially one guy named Max. We quickly found a common language and became best friends. He was a local. He knew everyone here, and with his help, I quickly got used to it. We often drank at the local bar, went hunting and discussed plans for the future. He was like a brother who always supported me in difficult moments. But one day, everything changed. I remember how it started with the little thing. Max has become kind of weird. He avoided talking, and when we met, he was always kind of thoughtful. Sometimes I caught his glances, which seemed alien to me. At first, I didn't think much of it, thinking that he just had his own worries. But then things got much scarier. Over time, I began to notice that Max was disappearing more and more often without explanation. We met less and less often. And when we saw each other, he was kind of distant. We used to be able to talk for hours, laugh, and make plans for the weekend. Now, every time it was a tense pause and I couldn't get rid of the feeling that he was hiding something. One evening, when I went for a walk around the town, I noticed Max's car parked near an old warehouse on the outskirt. This place has been abandoned for a long time, and I've never seen anyone go in there. Curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to get closer. The windows were boarded up, and the door to the warehouse was barely hanging on rusty hinges. I wasn't going to come in. I just wanted to make sure Max was okay. But as soon as I got closer, I heard voices. They came from inside, muffled, tense. I recognized Max's voice among them. He was talking to someone else. I decided to wait. About five minutes later, the door opened and Max went outside without noticing me. His face was stern, almost sinister. He was followed by two men whom I had never seen before. They looked rude, as if their lives had not been on the bright side. Max turned to them and said something in a low voice, after which they quickly got into the car and drove away. When I was alone again, I had only one thought in my head. What the hell is going on here? I knew that Max was not the kind of person who gets involved in dark things. Or did I just think I knew him? At that moment, I realized that my friend might have been hiding something very important and dangerous from me. The next day, I couldn't get that strange moment outside the warehouse out of my mind. What Max was hiding from me was bothering me. I tried to behave as usual, went to work, but my thoughts kept coming back to that night. Max was not just a friend to me, he was a person I trusted. What could he be hiding? In the evening, I decided to visit Max, pretending that I didn't know anything. We met at the same bar where we usually spent our evenings, but this time the conversation was even more strained than before. Max seemed nervous, his eyes darting around the room all the time, as if he was looking for someone. I asked him about the latest cases, tried to find out what he was doing in the warehouse, but he quickly changed the subject. It's okay, don't worry, he said, looking at me with a fake smile. Just a job, nothing interesting. This only increased my suspicions. I knew he wasn't telling me the truth. A few more days passed, and my curiosity turned into an obsession. I decided to find out what Max was hiding, even if it ruined our friendship. One evening, when he left for a meeting again, I followed him. This time his path led me to an old warehouse on the outskirts of the city, but this time, there was no one there. Max parked the car and disappeared inside. I walked up to the building and listened with bated breath. Voices were coming from inside. I couldn't make out what they were talking about, but the way they sounded, low, tense, made me feel a strange chill inside. I knew that this warehouse was used to store old equipment and had been abandoned for a long time. So what could they be doing here? My nerves were giving out. With every step I took, I felt a growing fear. 
But instead of leaving, I decided to take a chance. I found a small hole in the wall and looked inside. What I saw made me freeze in place. In the dim light of several lanterns, I saw Max and several other people. They were standing around a table on which lay a black bag, tightly tied. One of the men, tall and sturdy, with the rough face I saw that night, was carefully untying him. When the bag opened, I saw a man inside. His hands and feet were tied, and his mouth was taped shut. He looked exhausted, barely moving. This man was alive, but from the look of him, he wouldn't have lasted long. My heart sank with fear and disgust. I didn't know what to do. Max walked up to the prisoner and bending down began to say something to him. The words were quiet, but it was clear from his expression that he wasn't going to help this poor guy. On the contrary, Max looked cool and indifferent. I wanted to leave. I had to leave. But my legs wouldn't obey me, as if I was rooted to the ground. There were questions in my head. What kind of people are these guys? What do they do? And most importantly, how did Max get involved in this? A sudden sound interrupted my thoughts. One of the men noticed me. He looked right at the hole in the wall. I felt a pair of icy eyes staring at me. He said something to Max, and everyone turned sharply in my direction. Damn. I was spotted. I turned around and ran. My heart was pounding, and my blood was pounding in my temples. I heard the warehouse doors slam and someone rushed after me. A light wind whipped at my face but it couldn't drown out the sounds of footsteps behind me. I didn't dare look back. I knew if I got caught, it was over. My legs carried me as fast as they could. The wind burned his face, and his heart was pounding with such force that it seemed about to burst out of his chest. I didn't look back. There was no time to think or panic. There was only one goal left. To escape. The trees flashed by, and his breathing became more and more ragged. I knew that if they caught up with me, I was finished. I heard them rushing after me. Footsteps, footsteps, screams. It seemed that the forest was closing in around me, as if trapped, and the path to salvation was gradually disappearing. But I didn't give up, I moved faster and faster, knowing that any stop is death. I reached the clearing where the forest ended, and the road led straight to the highway. Cars were passing by at a decent speed, and if I had managed to jump out onto the roadway, then maybe someone would have noticed me and stopped. But I didn't make it. I was captured. Strong hands gripped my jacket with such force that I almost lost my balance. I screamed. The scream was short. I was knocked to the ground. The next second, I felt a blow to my side, then to my face. Pain was sharp, but I was still trying to pull away. My eyes were dark with adrenaline and fear. I didn't understand how many of them were around me, but I knew one thing. They weren't going to let me live. Calm down, one of them said, his voice so calm that there was not a shadow of emotion in it. You can't escape anywhere. They turned me over on my back, and I saw Max in front of me. His face, which used to be so familiar and friendly to me, now seemed alien. His eyes glittered with cold cruelty and in his hands he held a knife that glittered in the dim light of the lanterns. I told you you shouldn't have come in here. His voice was low, almost a whisper, but every word cut to the quick. Why? I asked, trying to say something through the pain and fear. Why are you doing this? Max just grinned as if my question was childish. Money, he finally said. Power, influence, and you just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I could feel the blood running down my face. Everything around seemed blurry. Consciousness began to fade. There was a ringing in my ears, but I could still hear his words, which were getting more distant and unintelligible every moment. We can't let you leave here knowing what you know. Do you understand that this is the end? I couldn't fight anymore. My body was weak. My strength was leaving me. I knew this was the end, but at that last minute, before my consciousness was completely plunged into darkness, I heard a booming sound. There was a loud noise, as if something heavy had fallen to the ground. When I opened my eyes, I saw Max lying on the ground. His head was turned in an unnatural position, and a man was standing next to him. He was wearing work clothes, dirty and torn, and was holding a huge wrench in his hands. I didn't know who he was. It hardly mattered. Quickly helped me up and pushed me towards his car. It was parked nearby. We started off so fast that I didn't even have time to realize what had happened. Are you okay? What is it? He asked, without taking his eyes off the road. I don't know. I managed to say. 
My body was shaking with shock and the blood on my face was slowly drying up. The car sped forward, leaving the warehouse and all those people behind. We drove in silence. I looked out the window and couldn't believe what I had just experienced. After a while, we stopped at a gas station. I got out of the car and went to the toilet to wash my face. A man I barely recognized was looking at me in the mirror. His face was beaten, blood was caked on his lips, and his eyes were full of fear and fatigue. I was still trying to make sense of what had happened, but a terrifying realization was growing inside me. Max was dead, but his friends weren't, and they'll find me. When I got back to the car, she was gone. My savior disappeared and I was left alone. No documents, no phone, no keys. I didn't know what to do next. I got to the nearest town on foot. There was only one thought in my head, to leave this place as soon as possible. I thought I could put it all behind me, but I was wrong. A few days later, I found out that none of those who were in the warehouse had been found. There were no bodies, no signs of a struggle. The whole warehouse seemed to have disappeared, and now this place was considered just abandoned. I changed the city. He moved to another state. The fear continued to live with me. Every night, I woke up from nightmares seeing Max's face in front of me, cold, cruel, betraying me. I knew that sooner or later they would find me. Those people who stood behind him will not forget or forgive. And now, a few years later, I'm sitting here telling you this story. Because I need someone to know the truth. If something happens to me, you'll know it's them. And you shouldn't trust anyone who seems like a friend to you.